Okay, so we're going to try this. You're going to excuse my eyes. I have a bad cold, but I felt like um, I needed to take. We're at the end of the year here now, and uh, I'm, I want to show you this too. I'm out at the river. It's winter now, so um, it's certainly much different than uh, than it is when I come out in the summer, but it's still completely beautiful. Um, well, here we are. You know, um, as much as I want to talk, and I will talk about, um, you know, the beauty of life, you know, and the wonder of life, because uh, it is completely beautiful. It's an adventure for me. But, you know, there is a lot of heartache and despair and a lot of pain and suffering, you know, in the world, especially today. You know, we're seeing it every day all across uh, this land, you know, all across this land. A lot of hopelessness and uh, that thing right there, man, it, without hope, man, it's, it's impossible, right? So my prayers are to... Um, increase our hope and you know certainly our faith right um and uh change um so i'm here in this moment giving thanks though um it's been an interesting time it's been a very interesting time and uh you know i've started processing of processes of sharing but uh, this particular moment you know right now man it's been magical and uh, you know I had a, a thought during the summer you know during my healing time not just a thought a desire to really get in a car and just ride and I talked about it just put on some music and ride and for me, that is um, my prayer and meditation. You know, it's, uh, you know, meditation doesn't have to be, or in prayer, um, you know, it's not always just, you know, sitting, your legs crossed, closed eyes, and, you know, silence. Uh, it can be many things. For me, it's sometimes walking and um, cleaning. I've shared that before. Um, we're riding. It's 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 a good thing. And my father and I used to do it all day. We leave the house at, you know, especially in his latter days, because he loved the ride. We turn on some good jazz, man. We ride the city, and we go have lunch, and and that was we had good times too. And go to the park, and maybe get out, walk for a little bit. And any time we engaged with some folks, that was good because my daddy loved people. And, um, but just riding, you know, just riding. And uh, so I was wanting, wanting that thing. Before I knew it, I needed to get some cash. <laughs> and there was a thing that I thought was going to go through and it didn't. So I was hearing, you know, the Uber Lyft thing, maybe. And um, a girlfriend um, ran into her. And she was like, the lifting, I'm, I'm lifting, I'm lifting. And so I knew that that was the confirmation. So um, she referred me and I started driving. And I'm driving in this, it's renegade, it's really, really cool. And I'm all up the peninsula, peninsula and uh, Silicon, Silicon Valley and uh, the city, San Francisco. Just amazing. San Francisco, I think I've said it, is so romantic. Twin Peaks, it's like these viewpoints in San Francisco where you see, you know, everything. Um, there's, there's places, you know, in Berkeley where you can see all of the bridges in Oakland. All of the bridges, you know, in the city. Um, there's these parks, and you know, Golden Gate Park, of course, is just incredibly beautiful. You know, it's it's just so much and so much beauty. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you got to take the shine off your eyes, though, because there's also 
lots of uh, despair. And uh, that's a whole other conversation that I'll get into. But um, God, you know, He really um, set me up. And I'll tell you how that thing worked in terms of healing. So for the summer, it was like hibernation in the summer, but not necessarily hibernation because I'm out, right? I'm exposed to all of the elements. God is 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 blessing me through through nature and you know, so I'm at the water, I'm taking these nature walks, you know, there's <laughs> there's these little like man, raccoons run down the street now in the city like <laughs> like cats or something you know so I'm seeing and of course all the birds and you know all of these things I couldn't get away so it's the local nature and it's absolutely completely beautiful because we have lots of trees so I did that all alone you know just myself and God and spirit and um, then I knew that um, I would be making these connections next level connections with people and different and uh, um, new and so I'm hearing all of that and I'm not sure about you know when and how that's going to come about because you know, I'm in it and hearing I'm alone um, but it is truly coming soon um, in a few weeks I'll be moving to a new state and uh, I, I hear and see you know the new people and uh, new folks um, that are coming but there was an in-between and the in-between was now uh, me riding down the highway and lifting folks <laughs> picking people up right i tell you God is amazing he's a wonder he is really a wonder he is truly a wonder and uh, a beautiful mystery I had some of the best jazz and everybody told me about it. <laughs> Folks have gotten in my car like, you are the best rider. Oh, you're the best driver. They love the car. God gave me all this space and uh, just, a, just a setup. But, uh, you know, that's the... And so for me... Um, it's meditation and prayer and then he's bringing in all these people and then so there's like this giving you know it's this grace and spirit you might want to call it ministry um, but it's like a portal and I'm in this space and people come in this car <laughs> I can't tell you, man. It's amazing the things that are happening. And I do call it speed dating because and sometimes I'll tell them because we're in deep. And I'm like, man, we got six minutes. Because <laughs> it's good, good, good stuff. Very good stuff. Um, I had to retape this because I'm trying to remember some of the things. So... For instance, and let me first start with everything that I just said. I picked up a, a young lady. She could have been my daughter the other day. I thought I was picking up a guy, actually. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning. This particular day it was my first day going out early, early in the morning. And um, I knew people were going to the airport. So I went into Berkeley. And uh, she was standing in black. And she had this, at least her overcoat was, and she had this black umbrella, and she had these lug luggages. And so I had passed her up a little bit, and I had to back up, so I'm kind of looking at her. And, you know, when you're in it, you're not really. But when I think about it now, all I can tell you is she was the one... And only that, because our, our time is so short, you know, I'm not hugging on people, but I feel like that, you know, like, I'm supposed to be hugging these people, you know, but, you know, it's kind of different. But for her, as soon as I got out of that car, we hugged, we hugged, and we bowed, and, because uh, it was beyond beautiful exchange. 
And I needed to feel that she had physical, you know, I just needed to feel that. But not that that didn't mean that she wasn't an angel, because she truly, I'm telling you, she was like an, an angel. And I wasn't certain that she and I would, you know, really exchange, have conversation, because she has, she was a very soft and quiet spirit. And uh, so when she got in my car, it was kind of light talking. And then I, you know, ask more questions. And then she talked a little more. And before I knew, boy, we were in. We were in. And she gave me everything that I needed. And I, she told me that I did the same for her because she kept saying, you too, and thank you. But what I was receiving was so amazing that I, I didn't even know what I was giving. We were just in. And I know I called her. I told her, I said, you're my honey, because she was just sweetness on my soul, to my soul. And um, she's going to be a beautiful, beautiful teacher. She's actually, uh, she told me she was at a, um, grad, she was at grad school in, in Berkeley. And then right away she goes, and not Berkeley. She's at a Buddhist school. And it's a small temple, about um, 50 students. She found her way there um, at a time when she had no hope. She said things were very hopeless. Uh, she was working at a place where there were lots of lies and lots going on and just not her fit. And so she didn't know what she was, what she was doing next. Um, and uh, God found, she found herself all the way completely across the country at this, at this place. And it's certainly for her. And she kept saying, it's not about religion. She goes, it's not about religion. She goes, I'm learning so much about myself through my connection and engagement with others. And then she started speaking like you. And then she talked about what this thing is for me, you know, driving and um, connecting and engaging with people the exchange and being a blessing for those folks who just need somebody to listen. And she would speak when she would um, speak into me and confirm the things that I've heard. I mean, she was maybe 22, 23. She would sound like, but my back is to her, she would sound back there like a hundred and 50-year-old woman, the wisdom, the voice would change, just good stuff, good, good stuff. And so that is what this ride has been. I meditate, I pray, I drive, um, and, you know, it's only for a few more weeks, at least here. I think I'll do it, you know, it's something I'll do, um, when I move, you know, to my new location, um, uh, and um, it'll be a way that I connect with people. That was the whole purpose of it, kind of getting out the kinks and understanding the process here, and if it was something I want to, you know, check out over there as well, and it's going to be one of many. Um, I've learned so much here that, you know, there's some things that um, I certainly will be doing. Um, you know, and on my on my new pathway, um, but trying to go back into what I'm trying to say, <laughs> cause it's so much, and I'm watching this clock go down. But um, you know, it started out because I just needed it so, and then it connected me to. You know, something that my father, a special moment, special time that my father and I shared. And I could tell you, man, it's been so spiritual. 
it's like this thing, it's like a portal. And people step into this car and they got amazing music and they all tell me about it. <laughs> Some of the baddest jazz out. And uh, in the city, you know, so it's an atmosphere, it's a tone. And uh, people got a lot going on, a lot going on. So, for instance, this one day, it was an amazing, an amazing day. And I shared this with uh, my friend, my angel that I just talked about. Um, when we got in, I shared it. It was a week of what I call a love and acceptance. But, you know, it's not like any other day. I mean, it was a day of, because all of these riders came into my car, and it was, they were... Most of them, which was interesting, were gay, men and women. I also had a couple of elders. One of the elders was uh, a woman who was also gay, and when she shared it with me, she was like, so interesting. I, I, I never just come out and tell people I'm gay. She was but I just don't, like, I can tell you that. And so our conversation, I'll probably continue to to be with her for, I want to connect with her forever. She was a, just extremely a beautiful woman. And um, when it started out with this young guy, could have been my son, about 22. And uh, he was just trying to find his way, you know, through um, jobs and what his next, what his future looked like. And so he was really open the moment he stepped into my car. We talked and talked all the way to work, which was about 20 minutes, 15 minutes or so. And uh, so he's just talking, and it's good stuff. And he's trying to decide if he should. He's lived with his sister. He said it's only been them. And uh, so he's lived with her forever, and I think she's, you know, she has a boyfriend, and so kind of looking at her future, and, and, and then he has his. So, you know, we had that conversation. And uh, and then there were so many others, but about, I think on this particular day, about 15 riders maybe. And so then I'll just mention a couple. There was Richard and Esmeralda. Richard and Esmeralda, they were a gay couple, two men. And, um, well, Esmeralda is, you know, she's, she he, you know, and uh, she, when I, they were at a little coffee shop when I pulled up, and uh, I could, they reminded me of Birdcage, which was my mama's favorite, favorite movie. We love, and mine, and my daughter, my, we love that movie, and uh, Esmeralda, was uh, something special, but so was Richard, and they thought I was like the coolest, the best. Is their I'm their favorite driver. <laughs> it was the best ride they ever had. They loved my music and the conversation, and I get that a lot. <laughs> I get that a lot, but um, and I say that with all humility because it's so funny when I. It's like, it's all God, you know, I'm like here driving, it's all God, so when I get, when I hear that, I go, wow, but, um, Esmeralda, Richard cracked me up because she told me about this, I can say when I pulled up, Esmeralda, tall, like six, five, seven, and she had this dress on, the sweater, and, you know, she has a, a, She's big, but she has, like, this dainty kind of spirit, you know, very dainty spirit. So the way she holds herself, and she had this wig on, and, um, you know, they were so much fun that, you know, I laugh. But because of the exchange, you know, I'm very careful about making them funny, you know, laughing at them. But it's a laughter with them. And so that's why I connected with the birdcage. You know, we had laughter and that sort of thing. And like Richard, he told me about her cooking. Richard, <laughs> Richard told me about Esmeralda in the kitchen. And he goes, because he, he loves to cook. And he's a great cook. And she cooks. She's a great baker. But she makes a mess. <laughs> so the 
flower and all over her hair and face and all over, you know, telling that story. I'm like, you know, I have this big laugh, so I'm laughing so hard. And so he's going bigger and deeper into the story. So lots of fun. And uh, we talked about, you know, them living in different places. Everybody is inspired by, you know, my next level uh, moving from another state, uh, from, you know, this state completely just changing and, you know, reinventing my life and the things that I have desired to do. You know, there's no stopping. There's no limitations. I'm, I'm going for it, giving it all to God and saying, you know, hey, let's do this. Let's do this. And um, so, you know, and I am a youngin, <laughs> so you know. And there's a lot of folks who want to do it, who are struggling, um, especially here in California. And so you know, I, I I leave them with sparks. You know, like why can't you? You know, and I mean serious, truly serious sparks. Like I know that the conversation will continue, and a lot of the folks that I talk to, they're gonna be you know, doing some, some things that uh, they thought were, you know, thought it was too late to do. It's like, no. And um, so that's cool. But then there was um, another gentleman on this particular day. He um, had lived, gay guy, gay man, lived in San Francisco um, and worked for a company for 25 years. And he moved to this little small conservative town. And he said he was targeted. He was, he was, they were somebody, they were, you know, that's all he heard was they were um, anonymously complaining about him on a daily basis. And uh, he was fired. He was terminated. So he didn't know what he was going to do. He was thankful that he had unemployment, was getting unemployment. I was picking him up from a meeting with the union and, the company and you know that's when he found out he had been really terminated for a month he had been suspended but he didn't know it had gone into termination and just weird stuff that we talked about that he told me how that went down and for him to just find out that it was actually a termination um, but just tears in his eyes you know just tears in his eyes as to you know what's next um, and I won't forget him and I've been praying for him and um, there was also a young woman on this particular day, Asian woman whose mama um, has four stage four breast cancer. So I'm praying for her. Um, so it was a heavy day. Um, another woman, the woman that I said, I'll, 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 I'm going to keep her in my life because she's beautiful and she doesn't have anyone. She's, uh, she's, she's one of my Eleanor Rigby's. Um, she lost her last, she didn't have any family or anyone, and um, her best friend passed away from uh, cancer um, not too long ago, and that was kind of the last of uh, who she had, but she came down with this rare disease. It lasted about five weeks, I can't remember the time, that, that was a little hairy, because then we talked about just everything. But, um, and our ride was maybe about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, because it was rush hour and I was taking her across town. And, um, but she, this particular disease, and I'll have to look into it because I can't remember the name, but where it paralyzes your complete body. And then you go into like a psychosis that makes you, you know, they had normally the folks who, who get it, they have to, they have a mental breakdown. and. For the most part, they, they, they don't come back because it's so traumatic. You're paralyzed from the tip of your toes to the top of your head. You can't feel anything, but you're there and you know it. And uh, it just came over her, and she was she was placed in a psychiatric ward and, and then made a ward of the state. And uh, a, a, a woman that's over her. Her case is, she says, is completely, completely uh, evil and, uh, you know, really has her in this home and she, you know, working with folks to find her way out. 
um, because she has the power to, to keep her there or not. And she turned to me at one point after we had talked about all of these ma amazing, amazing, I mean, she's beautiful and wise. And, but she looked at me and straight in the eye, she goes, do I look and sound crazy? And it, it was just amazing. It was like a movie that somebody has control over her.